This is 10.1 to 10.4 review continuing. We're doing number four. We are asked to complete the square for the equation of the ellipse and to put this in standard form. Once again, let's remind ourselves what standard form of an ellipse looks like. It's going to be x minus h quantity squared over a squared or b squared, depending on which one is bigger, uh, plus y minus k quantity squared over b squared equals 1. So we have to complete the square for each of the variables for the x's and the y's. Let's group the x's with the x's and group the y's with the y's. And let's put the C on the other side. We now want the leading coefficient of the x squared term to be 1 and the same for the y squared term. So whether the 16 goes into both of these or not, we are going to factor it out because we want the x squared to have a coefficient of 1. So this work goes into it nicely but it doesn't have to. Same thing for this. The 25 goes into 50 nicely, but it doesn't have to. Otherwise, we would end up with fractions, and that's fine as well. To complete the square, you take the b, the coefficient of the x in each of these, divide it by 2, and square it. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Same thing here. Take the 2 divided by 2. That's 1. Square 1. And that's 1. Now, we just added some things to the left side of our equation. We have to do the same thing to the right side. Well, let's see what we added. It appears that we added 4, but don't be fooled by that. What we really added is 16 times 4 because we have to distribute that. See, this is really 16 times, that's what the parentheses means, 4. So we really added 64. So we have to add 64 to that side as well. And let's see what we added on this side. We really added 25 times 1. So that's 25. Okay. So now let's see what we are left with. This is now a perfect square trinomial that gets factored into a perfect square. Same with this. The number that ends up being here is going to be always your b over 2, or the square root of this number, and has the sign of the b. Okay, as you can see, the same thing happened here. Okay, so here, 311, this is 375 plus another 25, so that's 400. And that worked out nicely. Let's see. Now we want to have a 1 here. So in order to make this be a 1, we have to divide both sides by 400. So it so happens that we can reduce these, but even if we couldn't, we would still have, we would still be dividing by 400 because we want to have a 1 here. Okay, so 400 goes into 25, 16 times. If you use your calculator, many people are tempted to put in the calculator to put 16 divided by 400, but what you really need is 400 divided by 16. You want to know, I'm sorry, that's 25. That's what I meant. Okay. What you really want to know is when you reduce this becomes a 1, and you want to know how many times 16 goes into 400. That's why that becomes 25. OK. 
okay so the same thing for this one this the 25 goes into 416 times now it just so happens that this these two numbers switched but that's just um it, it, that doesn't have to happen for every problem that's just because they designed the problem this way so that the numbers come out nice and round okay so now we don't need to graph it we are done with this problem but just in case they had asked us to find the center it would be h comma k so that's the opposite of this number which is two and comma the opposite of that number so that's negative one and just for practice let's graph this because we do need to know how to graph ellipses so you put the center at two negative one and you go in the direction of the x left and right five units one two three four five in each direction one two three four five and the, that's the major vertices there because 25 is bigger than 16 when you go in the y direction four so one two three four four up and down one two three four so because four and five are such close numbers this looks almost circular um, but a circle is actually a special ellipse but this is not a circle it's an ellipse it's an ellipse